In 1936, David Brown entered the tractor market in a joint venture with Harry Ferguson. The Ferguson Brown used Harry's unique three point linkage and draft control system. By the late 30s, it was becoming very clear that Brown and Ferguson had very different ideas as to what a tractor should be. Brown went on to develop a heavier tractor and launched it at the Smithfield Show in 1939. Ferguson, meanwhile, developed a new handshake agreement with Henry Ford, leading to the Ford Ferguson tractor produced in America. David Brown's VAK-1 proved to be very, very successful. It was very much in the right place at the right time and many were sold throughout the Second World War. The last version of this tractor was the famous Cropmaster and it finally ended production in 1954. They also built a version of this tractor for the RAF with full wraparound fairing and truck tyres. One of its key uses was pulling bomb trailers for rearming aircraft during the war. Although very similar to the RAF version, this is actually a David Brown Thresherman. It has a belt pulley on the front and a winch on the back. In 1942, David Brown also entered the crawler market. They produced a number of models, starting with the DB4 and on to the Taskmaster, the 30TD and the 50TD, finishing in 1963. The 50D was David Brown's first six-cylinder tractor. They built approximately 900 of them between 1953 and 1959. This 50D is undergoing a dynamometer test to see how many of its 50 horsepower the David Brown engine still has left. From 55 to 57, they built the Blue Wheeled 900 series. It was quickly followed in 1958 with the Implomatic series. These were produced in various model numbers and sizes right through till 1965. We'll pause the story here for a moment and take a look at some of the implematics at work.
1965, the Implomatics were replaced by the Selectomatic range. These had an uprated gearbox offering 12 forward speeds rather than the previous six. They also had an uprated hydraulic system. In the late 60s, a white and brown colour scheme was introduced. David Browns are often seen at work in the classic ploughing class. Let's pause once again from the story and take a look at some of the recent ploughing match action.
The 1200 was introduced in 1967 and production ran until 1971. Available with two and four wheel drive and ultimately with 72 horsepower. The rear axle design made it very easy to upgrade David Brown's to high clearance. With continuous rises in costs of development due to improvements in safety, combined with reduced tractor sales volume in the UK market, David Brown decided to sell the tractor company to Tenneco, the owners of J.I. Case in America. For a while they continued with the David Brown name and even badge engineered some of the American case tractors as David Brown's and sold them into the UK. This was very much signified by the adoption of the white and orange colour scheme across both the David Brown and the case range of tractors. Eventually the name of David Brown disappeared from the side of the tractors and they all became case branded. One of the dominant features on David Brown's in their day was the four-speed hydroshift transmission and it's interesting to note how this older case with hydroshift is able to keep up with the speed changes of the hydrostatic drive newer class Jaguar forage harvester. Our story is drawing to a close now, but nothing stays the same in this industry, and there's one final twist before David Brown finally disappears from the scene. In January 1985, the US government eventually approved the takeover of the International Harvester Company by Tenneco, the owners of Case and David Brown. This more or less signalled the end of product development at the Meltham factory of David Brown and the end of the David Brown name. And it's significant that in this final clip we see how the Case IH brand was finally able to completely eclipse the Case David Brown brand. <laughs>